Ms. Ostrovsky, chimerical. May I have a definition? It means unreal, imaginary, visionary, wildly fanciful, highly
I C A L. Highly unrealistic, wildly fanciful. That is correct. Child abandonment. When a child's parent or guardian willfully withholds emotional, physical, and financial support with no regard for the child's safety and welfare. Basically, it is when a child doesn't get the love and care they deserve and need from their parents. Studies from the Huffington Post show that nearly 60,000 children are reported to be abused or neglected each week in America, with an estimated 900,000 confirmations of violence every year. In addition, according to the National Children's Alliance, Nearly 700,000 children are abused in the U.S. annually. The youngest children were most vulnerable to maltreatment, and neglect is the most common form of, of maltreatment. Also, here are some numbers. Two-thirds of children serve disclosed sexual abuse, and nearly 20% of children serve disclosed physical abuse. That's what the character Olive Ostrovsky from William Finn's musical, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, feels like throughout this whole entire song. The song opens with a definition of Olive's next word to spell. Chimerical, which means unreal, magical, visionary, wildly fanciful, highly unrealistic. Olive takes this word into mind and starts to imagine her parents. The song slowly begins with Olive singing the lines, If I go to Washington, will I be on my own? Because if I go to Washington, who will be my chaperone? In the context of this musical, when someone wins the Putnam Spelling Bee, they are eligible to compete in the National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. Now, I would believe that most kids would feel excited about winning, or pressured about winning, like the normal kind of reactions to winning. But then you have Olive, and she's more concerned about whether she'll have a chaperone or not. Here she is, thinking about whether she's going to go to Washington with at least one of her parents, or all by herself. Here on out, we see her mom sing about Olive, or in this case, the things about Olive that Olive will never hear from her, in real life, because her mom is in an ashram in India, which she states in her other song, My Friend the Dictionary. Cause my mother's in an ashram in India. Olive's mom calls her a winner, the perfect child, a champion, all the things a child would want their parent to tell them. Then reality starts to kick in. Olive's mom hints at Olive having depression due to her daddily and mammally, cause depression runs in her family. So thanks to her parents and the state they're in, Olive has also ended up becoming depressed as well. So Olive's mom starts saying I love you to her and is soon joined by Olive's dad. As a side note, the line in Maybe It's True, I Love You is repeated multiple times by Olive's parents in the song. It's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. I mean, a parent's love to their child should be unconditional, natural, something a child shouldn't find to be highly unrealistic and wildly fanciful. And it only gets worse. Olive goes on to say that she wrote her mom a letter telling her about how fun spelling bees are but of course her mother didn't react and or respond. Olive sings about her mother never offering her to join you in the Bombay sun, even though she had quietly packed. She wants to ask her mom when she will return and what she has learned in India. Olive just wants to know why her mother isn't with her and her dad. Speaking of her dad, she states that the reason for her father's state, which in the musical he is always working and never gives time for Olive, I mean, come on, he didn't even drop her off to the beat and pay for her entrance fee is thanks to her mother not being present at all with the lines, I think dad is angry, ma, and I do not know what to do. I think he takes out on me what he wants to take out on you. Also, these lines hint at the possibility of Olive being abused, either verbally and or physically by her dad, because of her mom. And honestly, the song just gets worse and worse. Here on out, you hear Olive sing over and over how she wishes they were here, home. Both her mom and her dad. And overlapping her pleas, you hear both of her parents complimenting her, praising her, and singing, it, singing about how they couldn't be prouder. And just to add to it, Olive's parents ask her to let them say I love you to her one time louder. In comes some of the most amazing chords sung by three people at the same time ever, all of them saying I love you over and over again. As we get to the end of the song, Olive's parents begin to sing the sentence, and I swear it's true, I love. But they get interrupted as soon as the microphone is put in front of Olive, and she says, Chimerical, 
C H I M E R I C A L. Highly unrealistic, wildly fanciful. So, with Mr. Panch, one of the spelling bee judges telling her that is correct, Olive and her parents sing I Love You one last time. Now, when I think about this song, how it was made, the lyrics, how it was performed and sung, it honestly just kills me. Her parents are about to say that they swear that it is true that they love her, and the microphone comes in and stops them from completing that sentence. That microphone is like Olive's reality, literally stopping her mind from completing that thought and bringing her back to the real world, getting Olive back to what this whole entire song and what her relationship with her parents really is like. Chimerical. Olive says the word, spells it out, and defines it. And almost like a final nail to the coffin, Mr. Panch tells Olive that that's correct. Like, the fact that her image of what she wants her parents to be like is not real, and that is correct. In general, knowing the idea that Olive's definition of the word chimerical is her own parents loving her really, really hits you. Food for thought. Taken the way the song is titled, the quote-unquote I love you song, when someone uses quotation marks for a word or phrase, it can mean that whatever is in the quotation marks is ironic or sarcastic. So having a song called the I love you song that is really about the lack of love, the quotation marks around I love you really make sense when you think about it. <laughs>